to another edition of Pure Picks. All you pure pickers, I'm glad that you guys could come here and we're going to break down Brandon Allen versus Chris Curtis 2 UFC Fight Night in the Apex in Vegas this Saturday. Before we get to that, though, pure pickers, I wanted to go over some of the great plays that we had last week. First off, Kevin having this play saying tail this at March 29th, 11 a.m. This was a really big baller call right here. Callan Logren, minus 375, and Verna at plus 187. And that Verna call was fantastic. And, you know, obviously Kevin scored big in this play. We had a follower in our Discord, a Pure Pick Pros member, had tailed Kevin, <laughs> got some juicy odds himself. So glad that we were able to help him out and you know help the pure pickers out everyone in our discord really cash this week some more plays that we had obviously Callan Lochran he was our lock of the week pretty much a parlay juicer and when we had Chidi as well and the money line so you know I, I think that we just had a great week overall obviously our live betting opportunities were fantastic if you guys follow our discord and are pure pick pros member you guys get all the live alerts and we had an undefeated day for live alerts obviously we alerted dennis bazooka after we saw how much of a mismatch that actually was against connor matthews i was actually on connor matthews pre-fight and obviously changed my bias after the first uh, couple minutes so glad we were able to cash there and also kevin had a plus 400 play on Dennis Bazooka at, for the KO. So obviously he saw something he liked pre-fight as well. And just overall, I mean, here's another live opportunity, Julio Arce by KO. After the first few minutes of that fight, we can kind of see that, hey, Herbert Burns looks like he's about to gas out. So Kevin was able to catch that. And obviously Alex's play of the week was Manon Faro. He actually played this at a super juiced price, plus 240 so that's fantastic he got Manon by decision and obviously that fight was probably 50 45 easy so a lot of great plays overall last week wanted to go over the better MA tips officially obviously you saw the fantastic plays that we had I was big on Joaquin Buckley and turned out to be true there got an easy pretty much an easy unit right there Overall, we're 1.33 units up on the bet MMA tips. So when you combine that with our live action, with the alerts that we made throughout the week, I mean, I, I think it was impossible not to cash in our Discord. And if you're a Pure Pick Pro member, you cash pretty heavily if you followed the plays. Going over the good news, I just want to go over um, Parlay, Laugren, for and Faro. Obviously, uh, Alex was really confident on that, plus 224 odds. That was a fantastic play. I had Lauren and Aslan to win. That that was a back and forth fight, but at the end of the day, we had Aslan, and he cashed right there as well. And some of the losses that we had, you know, I'll let Alex and Gerard go over them as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, we we had a pretty good night. Uh, the loss that I wanted to go over was the under one and a half uh, for Rice McKee, and that was just a terrible play by me. I mean. Honestly, who knew that these two guys were gonna, you know, clinch? And yeah, the the clinching and the slow pace really just killed the the play. So yeah, that that's something that we'll take into account next time. Is you know, Chidi was going down in weight, so he probably was gonna change up his game plan, and that's just a volatile play. So I'm gonna keep that in mind going forward. But overall, I mean, we did a fantastic job. Uh, for UFC Blanchfield versus Faro. So really proud of our efforts overall. Once again, you know, we had Pure Pick Pro members really cash, and I feel great about that. So I'm glad that they were able to cash there. If you guys want to join, purepicks.gg, that's going to be where you'll get all of our alerts, all of our plays, real time. We already have a bet. I think it's two bets already up on the Discord. So please, Pure Pick Pros, you signed up at purepicks.gg. Press access, $10 a month. And yeah, that's that's about it right there. So let's move on to 
this upcoming fight night, right? I mean, Brandon Allen versus Chris Curtis, two. This is going to be a rematch, obviously. In the first match, Chris Curtis knocked him out. And now, you know, years later, Brandon Allen's coming back to try to avenge that loss. So, yeah, I mean, let, let's see what happens. I think that this is going to be an interesting main event, nonetheless. Um, moving on to the actual breakdown of the whole card. So, first fight that we have, and this is going to be a, a pretty fun one, I think. We have Dylan Butka versus Cesar Almeida. Dylan 7-2. He is 4-1 in his last five, and he is actually coming off a Dana White Contender Series victory via decision, facing off against Cesar Almeida 4-0, and he's coming off a decision win himself on the Dana White Contender Series. As we look for the odds for this fight, we see that Dylan is now minus 156, and he opened up at a plus 145 dog. So a line flip right there, and usually when the line flips, uh, that's a telltale sign. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this matchup, I'm going to have to just pass entirely. I, I know that, you know, that it might not be the best or most entertaining kind of answer right off the bat, right? But I, both these guys are making their UFC debuts. Um, we really don't know much about them. But we, we need some more evidence and data before we potentially lay any units on, you know, their fight or the over-unders even i think that this is going to be a classic grappler for striker matchup and in these spots i usually lean towards siding with the grappler uh, so i'm going to pick dylan in this spot i just have limited evidence to trust him entirely to execute a wrestling grappling based game plan for caesar which is going to be his clearest path to victory i think that dylan is just a little too wild on the feet for me to trust and to stay safe on the feet. I mean, he's going against a guy who's a decorated kickboxer like Caesar. I think Caesar actually beat Alex Pere in a like kickbox uh kickboxing matchup. So, yeah, really I I don't know if I can trust Dylan in the spot. On the other hand, this will be Caesar's fifth MMA fight in his career. You know, we have limited data on his ability to potentially stuff takedowns and his grappling and ground game overall. So, this will be UFC debuts for both fighters. I just don't have any idea of you know how these men will do or how look they will look on the big stage, right? This is gonna be their debut. So whoever gets their game going will probably win decisively. So either Dylan starting fast and wrestling Caesar right away, or Caesar being able to stuff the shots and sprawling brawling his way to victory. So pick here for me is going to be Dylan via decision. I think he's just gonna grapple his way to victory. But I, there's no way I can just trust him, especially, you know, even as a favorite right now. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass on this fight, but I'm going to be looking to see um, this fight for the future, right? Let's see if either fighter could implement their game plan. And going forward, whoever does do that, we can probably trust them for their next matchup. Moving on to the next fight that we have on the prelims, we have Gene Masamoto versus... Dan Argetta, and this is going to be a matchup at the Bantamweight division. Gene Masamoto is 14-0. He's 5-0 in his last five, and he's actually coming off a Dana White Contender Series decision win. So this will be his UFC debut facing off against Dan Argetta, 9-1. He's coming off two straight no contests. So, um, yeah, I mean, he lost his last fight against Malice John, but Malice John's I think pop for uh, some Adderall or something like that. So he's actually coming off a loss. But before that, he came off a win, and then he had a premature uh, stoppage against Ronnie Lawrence there. So he's actually one-on-one -on -one in his kind of last two. We look for the odds for this fight. We have Gene opened up at plus 120, and now he's a minus 185. So, um, yeah, interesting odds right there. I I'm seeing a lot of love for uh, Dan Argetta. Um, and honestly, I, I don't, I don't see it myself. Um, I, I think that I'm going to side with Mazumoto in this matchup. And the reason why is, you know, at, at first glance, right, this may seem like a, another striker versus grappler matchup. However, I believe that Mazumoto is well-rounded and he is as good a striker as he is a grappler. I think this is actually going to be a bad matchup for Dan. 
Dan, he's a very one dimensional kind of guy, one trick pony, in my opinion. He's a very high pace pressure grappler. And if he cannot get his game going, he just has very little else to offer, especially on the feet. So I think Mazamoto will be the better striker in this matchup. And I believe that he has enough in the toolbox and the grappling department to threaten Dan with takedowns himself and then slick subs as well. I mean, I, we saw what happened last time that Dan Argetta faced another well-rounded fighter in Miles Johns, someone who could strike and then also grapple and wrestle. So I think that the only concern that I have will be that Mazumoto, he fights on his back at times. So if Dan takes him down, he might be willing to play on the bottom position. And this is going to be his UFC debut. So those are the only two concerns I have in this matchup. Other than that, I think that Mazumoto will be able to keep up with the cardio department because he doesn't get tired in the later rounds like Miles Johns did. I'm going with Mazumoto via decision. I'm just going to hold off for now just because of those two concerns that I had, but I will monitor the line for a potential price or entry because opened up at a plus 120, you know, became a two to one favorite. Now he's a minus 185. So. Maybe we can get a little better price on him. I might consider it, but just with those two concerns, I, I think that I'm just going to hold off for now. Moving on to the next fight that we have on the prelims, we have Cynthia Calvillo versus Pierre Rodriguez. And this is going to be the fight in the strawweight division for women's. Cynthia Calvillo, 9 6 and 1, and she's 0 and 5 in her last fight. She's actually coming off a five loss streak. And that's a. Uh, Pretty bad, but you know, some split decisions thrown in there. She did lose a split to Loopy. So, you know, some rank fighters. Pierre Rodriguez, nine and one. She is four and one in her last five. And she is actually coming off a submission arm bar loss to Jillian Rod uh, Jillian Robertson. Let's move to the odds for this one. We have Pierre at a minus one sixty two, opened up at a minus one eighty. Yeah, so Man, this is, um, for me at least, I think I'm going to, this is a dog or pass fight for me. I, I think that I would not play Pereira at these prices as a as a favorite. I'm actually picking Calvillo here. I, I this uh, Both women are similar in physical frames and skill sets. I understand why Pereira is the favorite in this matchup, right? She's the younger fighter. She's the slightly more physical fighter at this stage in her career. However, I just don't see Pierre being able to impose her will in the grappling department. I think that Calvillo does a good job of keeping the fight on the feet. 77% takedown defense. And she has not been taken down in a fight since her fight against Carla Esparza, which was in 2017. So that's, it's been a long time since she was taken down. I think that this will be a mostly striking matchup because I think the grappling will both negate for each other. And I rate Cynthia as the fighter who will throw more volume. And I'm just more confident in her being able to consistently fight clean. She does have a nice jab. I think that she's a cleaner fighter on the feet than Piera. I think this is going to go down to the scorecards. And I would prefer to have a dog ticket in that case. So I'm not rushing to the window to for Calvillo, by the way. I mean, she's on a five-fight losing streak for a reason. There are some close losses here and there, but... You know, it's hard to back a fighter on a five fight losing streak. So pick here is Calvillo via decision. I'm holding off for now. Now I'm going to wait to see what the decision prop looks like and we'll go from there. And just well, overall, I mean, first three fights, right? Um, you know, we've had a lot of passes and I think that's going to be a running theme for this card, especially after, you know, we did pretty well. And next week's going to be UFC 300. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of traps in this card specifically and a lot of tough spots. So it might be a good idea to play a little bit more defense this week than offense and perhaps save those units for next week at UFC 300 where there's going to be better spots to lay down the odds and the uh, the units. So, yeah, I, I think that's going to be the game plan for me overall for, for this card. Let's move on to the next fight on the prelims. We have Alatang Haley. Versus Victor Hugo, Alatang Haley. He is night 16, 9, and 2. He's coming off a loss against Chris Gutierrez, where he got 30 27. 
Victor Hugo, 24 and 4. He's coming off a knee bar submission win on the Dana White Contender Series, and he'll be making his UFC debut here. Let's look at the odds for this fight. We have Victor Hugo at minus 125. He actually opened up at a plus 130. So he opened up as a dog. Now he's a favorite. I don't really agree with that movement. That's uh, kind of interesting, strange to me. So I, I also see some love for, for Victor Hugo on you know MMA social medias, a lot of respective names that have been on Hugo. I'm just gonna side with Alatang Haley here. I, I think that, you know, he's he's gonna be the the veteran in this case, right? I mean he has a lot of UFC experience fighting off against a guy who's making his UFC debut. I think Hugo is dangerous, you know, I, on the feet and the ground. He's just a little too wild for me to trust as a consistent force in the UFC. I, I think that this is also a step down for Alatang Haley after fighting Chris Gutierrez, who is a you know, on the kind of brink of the rankings, right? He's kind of, he might be a top 15 kind of fighter, but yeah, I, I think that this striking and the grappling combo of Alatang Haley, it's going to be enough to defeat a wild fighter like a Hugo. I, I think that the fight will likely play out with Hugo pressuring forward right out of the gate because he likes to swing with wild power and he likes to go for the takedowns off these wild exchanges. I believe that Hugo will actually underrate Alatang Haley's ability to fight off his back foot because Alatang Haley, he actually gets in trouble the most when he has to attempt to close the distance. You know, we saw that in the last fight, right? Chris Gutierrez was just dancing on the outside, throwing leg kicks, doing a lot of range, outside range shots, and Alatang Haley just was not able to close the distance because he's not the fastest guy. You know, he's more of a plotter. But I just don't think that will be a problem in this fight against Victor Hugo. I mean, Victor Hugo is going to be right in his face. So I see Hugo just advancing forward. And I see Alatang Haley being able to counter Hugo on the feet or even surprising Hugo with some offensive takedowns as well. And um, I, I believe that Alatang Haley, he's only been sub once, I think, in his career. So, you know, he stays pretty safe. He has been knocked out three times, but in the UFC, he's never been finished. So, I mean, he's gone to decision twice in the UFC, hasn't been finished yet in the UFC. So he is pretty durable. I think he has a good fight IQ as well. And yeah, I'm taking the dog action at Alatang Haley. I think right now, plus 105 is not a bad play at those odds against a UFC debut. So yeah, give me Alatang Haley in this fight. Moving on to the next fight that we have on the prelims, we have Norma Dumont versus Jermaine Duranami. And Jermaine Duranami, I can't believe she's back. So Norma Dumont, 10 and two. She is four and one in her last five. Is coming off that decision, decisive decision victory over Chelsea Chandler, facing off against Jermaine Duranami, 10 and four, four and one in her last five. Her last win was three and a half years ago against Juliana Pena. So it's, this is a three and a half year layoff for her. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty long right there. Looking at the odds for this fight, we have Norma Dumont at minus 190, open up at a minus 210. So, you know, kind of interesting line movement. I'm going to lean towards um, Norma Dumont here. I, I think that there, there, I just think there's no way that you could back a Jermaine Duranami first fight since 2020. You know, we, we just don't have no proof of what she would look like coming back in her heyday. I mean, she was a top contender at 135, beating everyone except for the GOAT in Amanda Nunez. I mean, this is almost four years now, three and a half years, right, layoff. And it is anybody's guess what she would look like coming back versus Dumont. I mean, Dumont has been active since then. She has also looked good in the UFC. This is all going to depend on what Jermaine looks like coming off a layoff. So this is going to be a, a classic pass fight for me. I'm not playing this fight at all just because of the volatile factors of a Jermaine Duranamy. Who knows what she's going to look like. Pick here is Norma Dumont via decision. But yeah, I am going to definitely pass on this fight. And we'll just move on to the next fight. Moving on to the next fight, we have Court McGee versus Alex Morono. So Morono and McGee. Uh, yeah, interesting fight. I mean, Court McGee, 
21 and 12. He's coming off two straight first round KO losses. Fighting against Alex Morono, 23 and 9. He's coming off a loss via decision to Joaquin Buckley, who we just saw fight last week. Let's look at the odds for this fight right here. We have Morono at minus 285. Yeah, give me uh give me some Morono here. Um I, I think that he's gonna be one of my gigalocks on the card. You know, I, I believe that UFC is giving Morono a bone after that tough matchup that they gave him against Joaquin Buckley. I mean, we saw that Joaquin Buckley is a ranked fighter in this welterweight division. And, you know, Alex Morono, he's on the cusp of the rankings, right? He's not really a ranked fighter, so I think that was a mismatch. Morono, you know, he tends to struggle against fighters that have more power or are more athletic than him. And McGee is neither in this matchup. I think that McGee's last finish in the UFC was in 2010. And he has been a decision machine machine ever since, unless he has been finished himself. I mean, McGee's last advantage in his game, in my opinion, was his durability. And even that has faded. He's coming off two straight KO losses in the first round. I just think Morono will have the advantage here on the feet with his underrated power and good movement. And Morono will also be able to hold his own on the ground and in grappling situations. So, I mean, we saw what he did with his sub win against Tim Means. Uh, this guy is pretty high IQ as a fighter. He just has some trouble with people who are more athletic than him or has more power than him. So, yeah, pick here is going to be Morono via decision, but I could see a finish here too. I think he's a safe parlay piece. I would, you know, stuff in the parlays. I think he's going to be a good lock this week. So, yeah, minus 285. I mean, not bad odds there. So, yeah, give me that all day on Alex Morono. Let's move on to the main card. So, we have Trevor Peak versus Charlie Campbell. And this is going to be one of the fights that I'm definitely going to tune in for. We have Trevor Peak, 9-1. He's 4-1 in his last five. Coming off of that win against Muhammad Yaya. Facing off against Charlie Campbell, 8-2. 4-1 and and in his last five as well. And he's coming off that KO win against Alex Reyes. Dominic Reyes' brother, I believe. Fight odds for this, we have Charlie Campbell at minus 190. Opened up at a minus 200. I think the value is definitely on peak here. Uh, give me peak. I mean, I, I just think he's the the dog here, right? Um, I like the value of Trevor Peak. He has a solid game of a tough dog, extremely durable and relentless with dangerous power. Campbell has been KO'd before uh, versus Chris Duncan, another high pressure in your face fighter. I think that Campbell will go out and try to fight a clean technical fight, and I also think that he will be roped into being in Peak's face. But he's going to be surprised by the danger that is coming back in his direction, I think, when Peak pressures him, right? I think both of them are going to be in the pocket at points, and the more dangerous guy will be Peak, in my opinion. I think the safer play would be Trevor Peak inside the distance, decision, no action, and I think that dropped. So let me see what the odds look like there, because last night when I was doing this, it wasn't... There. Okay, so... Plus 150, I think that's a safer play than playing his money line, honestly. Because if it goes decision, I feel like Charlie Campbell is going to win that fight. Uh, he just has the higher upside in point fighting against a guy like Trevor Peak. So I think that inside distance, decision, no action, plus 150 on Trevor Peak is a solid option. I probably will probably play that, honestly. I think that's a good play. So pick here is going to be Peak inside the distance. And yeah, I think he's a solid dog this week. And that play of inside distance decision, no action is pretty solid. Let's move on to the next fight on the main card. We have Lucas Bresky versus Walter Walker. I think Johnny Walker's brother. So Lucas Bresky, he is 8-4-1, coming off of three straight losses. Got KO'd by Waldo Cortez Acosta. Not a good look. We have Walter Walker, 11-0. He's going to make his UFC debut here. He's coming from Titan FC. Let's look at the odds for this fight. We have Walter Walker at minus 360. Open up at a minus 400. Man, I have to I have to go with Walker in this fight. Um, but 
I'm damn sure not trusting him. So this is his UFC debut. Um, if you actually watch how this guy fights, I mean, he takes a lot of damage. Walker should be able to oppose his will and just grappling pressure on Bresky. I mean, Bresky is coming off three straight losses that show holes in his game at the UFC level. He came to the UFC with some hype, however, just failed a drug test and has since looked like a worse version of himself in the cage. I believe this will be a physicality mismatch. It, and I mean, I'm favoring Walker in this kind of matchup. It could look similar to the Carl Williams fight. Um, only reason why I'm staying away is this will be a UFC debut for Walker and anything could happen in heavyweight matchups. So pick here is going to be Walker via KO. But I could potentially get talked into the over one and a half. It opened up at plus 185. Now it's minus 120. But yeah, I'm, I'm probably just going to stay away from this overall just because of UFC debut, heavyweights. Um, we just don't know how Walter Walker is going to react in this uh, in this spotlight, especially as a big favorite. So yeah, I'm going to probably pass on this fight overall. Let's move on to the next fight on the main card. We have Ignacio Bahamondes versus Christios Gallegos. So. Ignacio Bamahon is 14 and 5. He's coming off that loss against Ludovic Klein and fighting off against Christos Gallegos 20 and 11. He's coming off of that loss against Daniel Zuhelper. Very similar stature and profile to uh, Ignacio Bahamondes, by the way. Looking at the odds for this fight, we have Ignacio at minus 320, opened up at a minus 275. So, man, I, I'm going to lean with Ignacio here. I think that, you know, he should be the, the favorite here. He's the rifle, rifle favorite. However, I do think Gallegos is going to be a, a live dog early uh, just because of the, the grappling and the potential pressure. I mean, we, we saw what happened to Ignacio in his last fight. I think that Baja Mondes should have the advantage on the feet. And if this fight stays standing, he should just cruise to decision victory. But I believe that Gallegos, I mean, he knows this. He's going to try to pressure grapple and swing with wild power against Baja Mondes right out the gate. After Baja Mondes last loss against Ludovic Klein, I mean, we saw what happens when he faces against strong grapplers who commit to the takedowns. I just think that this is going to be a little different because Ludovic Klein is a well-rounded fighter. He's also a good kickboxer with good cardio. So he put Bahamundes in a tricky position where he was an opponent that just had him covered in, in most areas in the fight. And I think the biggest difference in this matchup is that while Gallegos, he does a good job of starting fast, he tends to slow down the later the fight goes, and he's just not as clean of a striker on the feet as a Ludovic Klein. So because of this, I think that Gallegos will be a live dog early finishing abilities on the ground and the feet. However, once he tires down the stretch and he probably will get tired just because he's been gassing throughout his whole career, I think Baja Mondes could pick him apart in the feet on a way to decision victory or a potential finish if he finds Gallego's chin. So yeah, Baja Mondes inside the distance is going to be my pick. I think that this is a potential live play opportunity on Baja Mondes if Gallegos does not finish him early. So maybe a pre-fight stab at Gallegos early rounds but yeah I think uh, overall I'm probably just going to stay away from this fight unless it's a live entry opportunity moving on to the next fight on the main card we have Morgan Chere versus Chepe Marscaro Morgan 19 and 9 and 1 he is coming off KO victory in his UFC debut fighting against Chepe 15 and 6 he is coming off that KO victory over Jack Jenkins, where he broke his arm. Looking at the odds, Morgan is minus 126. Chepe plus 106. So, yeah, the odds have been steadily going towards Chepe uh, in the last couple of days. And I, I, I think I tend to agree with that line movement. I think that I am leaning towards Chepe myself. I, I think that he is the he has the game of a underdog that you would like to have and like to see. I mean, you know, he should have the edge in 
the grappling department and the durability department. I just think that the only concern that I have on Chepe in this in this fight is that he does keep his hands a little low. And I feel like he can leave himself open to counters. And we see what Morgan does. I mean, he, he has some good stand-up skills, actually. He's not the typical kind of French fighter that just does low volume. He actually comes at you and tries to find the finish. So I think he could pick Chepe apart if, you know, if Chepe just keeps the hands low and he'll open himself up to counters and just pressure. So the later the fight goes, I think Chepe will have an advantage just because I think I do think that he has better the better cardio in this matchup. But yeah, I think the the pick for me is going to be Chepe via decision. I'm probably just going to stay away from this as well. Um, you know, Chepe has been finished before in his career, and I think Morgan is actually a pretty dangerous guy in the feet. So yeah, I think I think just a stay away matchup for me or a potential dog or pass fight, right? Let's move on to the co-main event of the evening. We have Alexander Hernandez versus Damon Jackson. And yeah, I mean, this fight, I can't believe it's a co-main event. It's pretty interesting. I mean, Alex Hernandez, 14-7. and seven. He is 2-3 and three in his last five, coming off that decision loss against Bill Algio, fighting off against Damon Jackson, 22-6-1. and one. He is coming off a loss against Billy Q via decision Looking at the odds for this fight, we have Alex Hernandez minus 162 opening line, and he is now minus 205. So some favorite action has been taken on Alex Hernandez. Yet again, I think that this is going to be a, a fight that I'm probably going to pass on. Um, I'm, I will side with Hernandez in this fight. However, I believe that Jackson could be good later on in the fight. I just think he's going to take some major damage early in the fight, right? Hernandez is a dangerous fighter uh, early on, especially, and he's live to finish a fighter like a Damon Jackson. I think that Damon Jackson has just been showing me some worsening durability in his last few fights, some worsening gas tank and cardio as well. I think Hernandez should be the better striker on the feet, and I do not believe Jackson will be able to hold down Alex Hernandez enough especially in, in the early stages of the fight. So Hernandez is going to be in Jackson's face looking for a finish, and he has a good chance of getting it, in my opinion. I think that the only reason why I'm concerned about Hernandez is, I mean, just look at his career, right? Throughout his whole career, he is an inconsistent fighter, showing up with cardio issues. You just can't can't trust him to be a two-to-one favorite even. That's, that's the only reason why I'm not going to pick, I'm not going to, you know, lay the juice on him, so to speak. So I think the later the fight this the later this fight goes, I believe that he will look less and less like a favorite. I'm just gonna pass for now due to the major question marks on Hernandez at minus two oh five. I actually do like the under potentially. The under right now is minus one seventy five, opened up at a minus one oh five. But here here's the thing about the under. It could turn into a grapple fest because maybe Damon holds him down. Alex is also a wrestler himself. He has some grapple grappling and wrestling technique so that may kill the play so yeah i think the the pick for me is going to be alex via ko but i just don't have enough confidence in him to actually play that price so yeah i'm gonna pass on this fight overall as well let's move on to the main event of the evening so we have a rematch of brandon allen allen versus chris curtis the action man brandon allen he is 23 and 5 coming off a five fight win streak and coming off a submission victory over Paul Craig, Chris Curtis, 31 and 10. He's coming off a win against Mark Andre Bearholt, where it's a split decision win. Looking at the odds for this fight, we have Brandon Allen at minus 200. This is another tricky fight. And I think that it is very, it makes sense why this is the main event of this card, because I think that this is the perfect example of this card overall. I mean, we, we have a, just a highly volatile matchup, even though it's a rematch. I, I'm gonna go with Allen here in the main event. Um I I just although I do not I just don't see the value in him just given that he was KO'd in their first fight. I mean, I believe that he has improved immensely since that matchup, and Curtis has seemed to decline in recent fights. I mean, Curtis's matchup with Nazarene Imovov was very concerning to me. I mean, he not only was he outlanded on the feet, 
he was taken down three out of four times. And Imavov is known as the, you know, not known as the best grappler in that division. So that was a very concerning um, fight. I do think that since their last fight, Allen has improved physically and matured. However, he just has a tendency to be a in-your-face fighter. I, I remember going back to the Bruno Silva win that he had. That was a, they were those guys were just trading big shots. Him and Brandon Allen and Bruno Silva and. I feel like Brandon Allen, that's just how he likes to fight. He likes to be in your face, and that just plays into Chris Curtis's game, right? He's a great boxer who likes to counter, and he keeps himself pretty safe with a nice high guard, kind of that Sean Strickland kind of game, right? So they all kind of fight the very similarly there. I just think that, yeah, I mean, a potential good play could be Chris Curtis inside a distance, decision, no action. That could be something that's, you know, could be interesting. See what the odds are, those for right now. Plus 110. Man, open up at plus 170. I think that would have been a great price, but right now it's pretty much a pick em, So, yeah, I mean, the only reason why I just am holding off on that because Brandon Allen does have a pretty good takedown game and, you know, submission game. And, but you know, Chris Curtis does have a good takedown defense, right? But we saw in that Nazardine Imavov fight, he was taken down. So, yeah, I think the over two and a half actually at minus one twenty could be a potential play, just because of how both these men fight and you know what Brandon Allen's maturity and improvement since then, and Chris Curtis's decline. I mean, he's like thirty six now, fighting off against a Brandon Allen who's twenty eight, you know, in his prime. So, the pick here for me is going to be actually Brandon Allen via decision but I'm going to pass on this fight as well. So that about does it. I mean, I think that uh, we had Melissa Mullins and Nora Cronoll, but um, for some reason I don't see that on Tapology. So I'm assuming that that fight got uh, canceled in a way. Oh, actually, never mind. <laughs> I just, just totally skipped over that. So let's do that for the last fight here. So Melissa Mullins versus Nora, uh, Nora Cronoll. Melissa, 6-0. Five known in her last five, and she's coming off a victory over Irina Aleskiva, fighting off against Nora seven and one five known in her last five, coming off that decision win over Jocelyn Edwards, and for that fight right here, look, let's look at the odds. So Melissa Dixon is minus three fifty five, opened up at a minus two fifty five. Um, yeah, for for me. Not to sound like a broken record, but I think I'm passing on this fight as well. And just don't have a good read on you know either of these women, to be honest. I, I will pick Melissa in this matchup. I think both these women have good striking skills. I think Nora does have the better striking defense of the two. I think that the reason why Melissa is probably a minus three, you know, three forty or the big favorite that she is is I think she just has more ways to win in this matchup. Uh, she has superior grappling skills. She's a dog. Uh, has some good cardio. She was actually Melissa was actually dropped in her last fight against Irina Alaskiva, and she just came back through pure will and grappling and cardio. So Nora was you know taken down five out of eight times in her win over Jocelyn Edwards, and you know was controlled for eight minutes and forty two seconds. I think that Nora did do a good job of reversing positions on the ground. However, I just don't believe that she'll be able to reverse them as well versus Melissa. So I'm going to pick Melissa in this matchup, but I just don't trust either women, woman to you know lay units in this fight. So yeah, Melissa via decision is the pick there. So, well, that about does it. I mean, we uh, had an interesting kind of way to finish <laughs> with the first fight, obviously, but I just missed that, I guess. So. Yeah, overall, I mean, as you can guys can kind of see, peer pickers, you can tell that, you know, this this card, I don't see a lot of good fights on this card to actually play here. I mean, the only ones that I'm like super confident on are Alex Morono. I feel he's he's uh, gonna probably win in that fight, and I like the value. Trevor Peak inside the distance decision, no action. I think that's pretty solid. Alatang Haley is also something that's pretty solid. So. I think there are, you know, a few spots that could be solid, but overall, like I mentioned in the beginning or in the middle of the video, I think this is a fight card where we play some defense and just, you know, save up for next week 
for UFC 300 because there's going to be a lot of action there. And, you know, th this is going to be another kind of standard apex night where anything could happen. There's going to be a lot of UFC debuts, a lot of fighters with limited tape. So a lot of volatility here. I mean, we have J Jermaine Duran and me coming off a three and a half year layoff. Not not good signs for, <laughs> you know, some sure things, as as you would say. So, yeah, Peer Pickers, thanks for supporting us. Obviously, you can join and become a Peer Pick Pros member at peerpicks.gg. Join the Discord. Get some of that live action that we got. Ben and May tips have been solid. So, yeah. Best of luck this weekend, guys. And we'll be back soon.